Now the next thing in support of biological evolution that is Darwinism, that is called the natural selection theory. This is another theory explaining the intricate mechanism of evolution. Now the Darwinism or natural selection theory was proposed by Charles Robert Darwin 1890-1852. Now he wrote a book. The name of the book Origin of Species. Simply we can say the origin of species. So if you have the expansion of the book titled Origin of Species by Natural Selection. So it was published in 1859 by Darwin along with another person by name Alfred Russell Wallace. So he also made contributions in the preparation of just the natural selection theory. That's why now the theory is aptly called as darwin wallace theory of natural selection. darwin wallace theory of natural selection. Now, the book Origin of Species simply we can see. It is also by expansion we can see. Preservation of favored races in the struggle for existence. Preservation of favored races in the struggle for existence. That is the another name of the type. Okay. Now, he made observations while he was actually aboarding a ship and just in exploration around the world. And before that one, so what he actually made, that is uh, the natural selection theory. Now, the book Origin of Species explained the intrinsic fact of evolution, the real documents of evolution provided how natural selection is responsible for the origin of species. These are all some of the actually importance of the book Origin of Species, the origin of species. This is a full expansion of that one, Origin of Species by Natural Selection. So along with Alfred Russell Wallace in 1859, he published the book. And what were the proceedings before just actually that is publishing the book? So he went on voyage. So he is not actually uh, what is called evolutionist. He is a British naturalist. He is a British naturalist. Very much interested to study about nature. So he was selected to abort the ship in exploration around the South America. So for that he went on voyage for nearly five years. Maybe 1831 to 1836. Around South America, he went on voyage in a ship. The name of the ship, what is called HMS Beagle, this is the name of the ship. So, after completing the voyage, so during that voyage, he visited many places. He made intensive observations and collected many facts and then returned to England. Now, in 1836, he started his work for nearly about the next 20 years, just based on the observations, collection of facts. He arrived at certain conclusions that is only after 20 years. That's why he said that only 1859 only he published his results after working nearly about just 20 years. So he visited many places that is what we have in the ocean also many islands. One of the islands he visited is called Galapagos Islands. This is one of the islands he visited. Now, he made many observations in the case of flora and fauna and also observed there is also a huge variety and structural similarities among the organisms and also there are adaptive features to cope with the environmental conditions. And as this island provided a number of evidences in support of evolution, till today it is called Living Laboratory of Evolution, Galapagos Islands, now just actually considered as till today Living Laboratory of Evolution. So, I mentioned already he made observations, extensive observations of plants and animals, he collected many facts, then arrived at the conclusion after nearly about 20 years to publish his work, what is called that one. And normally, he observed 
that is a huge variety and structural similarities among the organisms, huge variety and structural similarity among the organisms and also their adaptive features to cope up with the environmental conditions, to just adapt to the environmental conditions. And it was the one in Northern one he proved actually the concept, the survival of the fittest. He proved that so those organisms which have survival value, they left their progenies, left their progenies. Other unfit organisms were eliminated. He explained this one through natural selection. He strongly believed that through natural selection, any life processes can be <coughs> normally just explained. So, that is the main fact regarding what is called Darwinism. And I mentioned already he made several facts, observations and inferences. We have to go for the different facts and observations made by him one by one. Fact number one, over reproduction and prodigality of production. What is the meaning for that one? All the individuals have the ability to reproduce, to form their progeny. While doing so, they multiply in a geometrical manner. That is what is called over reproduction or prodigality of production. So they multiply in a geometrical manner, not arithmetic manner. That is 2, 4, 8 like that. And here I am given some of the examples. If you are taking a salmon fish, in a season it produced nearly 28 million eggs per season. Then if you are taking the Atlantic oyster, it produced nearly 80 million eggs per season. 80 million. And if you are taking the codfish, during the breeding season, its ovary contains nearly about 10 million eggs. 10 million. If you are taking the elephant, the smallest, sorry, the slowest breeder, so in its lifetime, a female elephant gives birth nearly only 6 offspring during its lifetime. 6 offspring. If a pair of male and female elephant breed, and produce offspring in a span of 750 years. In a span of 750 years, we had nearly about 6 million elephants. So, if all these organisms, so I am giving only a few examples, if all these organisms are reproducing without any check, so there is no place for human beings to even keep their legs on land or in water, any other organism. So, but there is a chip. That is the rate of reproduction is controlled by various environmental factors. So that what is happening, there is a constancy in the number of individuals for each case. If only salmon fish alone multiplied, then it occupied the entire ocean without giving any place for any other organisms. But there are environmental factors what are called the natural factors, which check the rate of reproduction so that not all the organisms, not all the eggs, we can say not all the eggs hatch into young ones. That is called what is known as the constancy of individual, the constancy of population. So, irrespective of over reproduction, there is a constancy, the number of individuals for each population. So, that is number one, fact number one, over reproduction or prodigality of production increase the number of individuals in a geometrical manner. Now the fact number two of natural selection theory. Struggle for existence. Now when the number of individuals are increasing steadily, there is no corresponding increase in food production as seen by tear mouths. So struggle for existence occurs between the individuals for three purposes, one food, another one space and also meat. So, these factors, food, space and meat, as they act as limiting factors,
competition exists among the individuals that resulted in what is called struggle for existence. To survive, they have to compete with each other. For these three factors, which are considered as the limiting factors of a population size, food, space and weight. Now, there are three types of struggle suggested by Darwin. Number one, intraspecific struggle. It is a struggle between the members of the same species. Members of the same species. What for? Three main reasons. Food, space and man. Food, space and mate. These are the three main reasons for what is called intraspecific struggle. So it just normally caused a severe check on the rate of reproduction. It caused a severe check on the rate of reproduction. Now the second one, interspecific struggle. It is a computational struggle between the members of different species. And it is not for mate, only for two purposes, for food and space. So a intraspecific struggle for three limiting factors, food, space and meat, because of similar individuals. Now the interspecific struggle just only for two limiting factors, one the food, another one the space. Now it is the most common type of struggle most common type, common type of struggle. Because two different species are competing the same food, say an example of lion and tiger, they are competing for the prey, namely what we have, the deer population. They are competing for the same type of food, that is why the competition is more here, they also consider as a common type of struggle. The third type of struggle, that all the organisms are exposed environmental struggle. So it is a struggle with the environmental situations. We have environmental variations. What we have the climatic variations. They have to compete with the climatic variations. They have to compete with the natural calamities like earthquake, then what we have the flood or any other what we have just volcanoes etc. So that is about the environment struggle. So the one which produces severe check in reproduction, interspecific struggle. The most common type of struggle is interspecific struggle as two different organisms are competing for the same type of food. And the third one, all the organisms have to compete with the environmental variations. This is about what we have the struggle for existence. This is because of the increase in number of individuals Competition occurred among the individuals for different factors. Fact number three, universal occurrence of variations. If you are observing the individuals, both plants and animals, and they exhibit differences. So variations are the characteristics of all plants and animals. If you are comparing two animals, say an example of two tigers, two human beings, no two individuals similar or alike. And even you can observe the differences or variations in the case of identical twins. Even some slight variations are there in the case of identical twins. If you are taking the children of the same parent, they exhibit variations either in color or in behavior or in height and other characters. Now those variations, if you are taking variations, Though variations are universal in nature, not all the variations are significant. Some useful variations which are called the heritable variations that occur in organisms help them to overcome the struggle and then pass on to the next generation. And such heritable variations are considered as the raw materials for evolution. Variations are the raw materials for evolution because because of variations only you can find differences among the organisms of different populations or different species. And how are these variations caused? These variations are caused because of mutation. So variations are the differences. We may have variations of different types. Continuous variations or discontinuous variations we are not talking about. The discontinuous variations are caused because of mutation mostly according to the mutation theory. So anyway, now variations are caused by mutation and the variations are the raw materials for evolution. Suppose both options are given. Which one of the following is the raw material for evolution? 
Option A, variations. Option B, mutation. So they have to consider only the mutation. So because mutation is the main cause of variations. Out of these two answers, the best answer we have mutation. That's about the universal occurrence of variations which form the raw materials of evolution which are passed on to the next generation and such variations are called heritable variations. Though different animals are facing the struggle for existence, but only few individuals with the favorable adaptations can survive. They live as the fittest organisms in the population, in nature, because the nature is the one which selects the right type of individuals and leave those individuals to survive and eliminate those individuals which are unfit to the environment. So that is called survival of the fittest. The fittest organisms are selected by nature and allowed to survive in the population. They become better suited to the change in environmental conditions. And based on the survival of the fittest, now he proposed natural selection theory. Now natural selection, the nature is the most powerful selective force that is a powerful source. Now what is natural selection? It is an imaginary concept which include all the processes that are responsible for the survival of an organism. It is the nature which selects the right type of individual, the fittest organisms to survive. And just remove or eliminate the unfit organisms from nature. So I mentioned it is a major powerful source, a selective force. He compared what is called the origin of species through natural selection small isolated group. He strongly believed that now actually the survival of the fittest just or we can say the struggle for existence resulted in the survival of the fittest so that the fittest organisms became better adapted to the changed environment and they can survive. That's the concept of natural selection. So it is a nature which selects the right type of individuals and give the certificate to those individuals to survive so that those individuals can just lead to the next ladder in evolutionary process. So these are some of the facts related to Darwinian concept. So it is a selective force by nature which normally selects the right type of individuals which are called as the fittest organisms and eliminate those organisms without favorable variations and adaptations. That concept is called natural selection and that is what we have the Darwin exposed to the public. Though Darwin has given the intricate mechanism of evolution in his book, The Origin of Species, there are certain objections to his what is called the Darwinian concept, Darwinism or natural selection. What are the objections? Number one, so he did not explain the mechanism of variations. That is, the origin and cause of variation was not known by him. That is called mechanism of variation. He focused only on small fluctuating variations and not on macro variations. He calls such macro variations as a force of nature because of nature, sports means the play. And now, the third one, he did not distinguish semantic and general variations, even for heritable, non-heritable variations. So he did not distinguish, he did not differentiate the variations of the semantic cells and also the variations of the germinal cells and the differences between these two and also unable to differentiate heritable and non-heritable variations. And the next one, he did not explain the occurrence of vestigial organs and also the occurrence of some over specialized organs and some organisms. So he did not explain the occurrence of vestigial organs and also over specialization in some organs. What are the examples? Now, law the over specialization. The over specialization resulted in the extinction of the organism. So, when 
there is any structure which exceeds its growth that is a hindrance for the animal obstruction to the animal while just moving along the forest that causes the death of the animal leading to the extinction of that animal and given two examples one the large tusk in extinct mammoth the large elephant have what is called large tusk this is enormous in size over specialized larger in size that is called over specialization the name of the mammal jefferson mammal after the name of the person who noted it another example just over sized antlers the antlers are nothing but the horns in the case of deer one deer that was observed in ireland called irish deer so it did not focus on these vestigial organs what is the reason for the over specialization some structures are more in size huge in size that resulted in the extinction of the organisms these are the objections made by people against darwinian concept another just objection to darwinian concept he explained only the survival of the fittest the organisms which had adaptive value were survive and leave their progeny and might leave their progeny but he did not explain how did these structures how did these structures normally came into existence so he explained the survival of the fittest and not the arrival of the fittest because at the time of darwinian concept we have the fit organisms fitter organisms and the fittest organisms all they were present all they were present but he did not know how did the fittest organisms came to exist that is what is called not the arrival of the fittest he did not explain the arrival of the fittest but he explained only the existing organisms with a better value okay this is another important objection to darwinism Neo-Darwinism is an interpretation of the Darwinian evolution through natural selection, because the concept of Darwin was accepted, and they made the people, the Neo-Darwinian people, made only some changes in that one, as it was accepted since from the beginning of their what is called the proposal. They wanted to change based on some scientific basis, as in the case of Lamarckian concept. now we have normally various facts and discoveries made about the population sorry about what we call the evolution and that supported the neo darwinian concept and it was developed by different people they are called neo darwinian people for example we have that is valles then we have hinrich Hick, then Mendel, and also Weismann. So these were the new Darwinians. They have suggested some ideas. What ideas? The change in frequency of genes in a population arises. This is because of the following facts: the change in the gene frequency. Occur in a population occurs in a population because of the following factors. It may be because of variation, or it may be because of mutation, or maybe what is called natural selection, or because of isolation. So these are the major factors responsible for change in frequency of genes in a population. that resulted in the formation of a new species because darwin did not know anything about genetics he proposed one concept what is called theory of pangenesis pangenesis according to this concept of darwin we have small particles what are called pangenes and these pangenes are present in each and every cell they are passed on to the germ cells through the blood stream from where they are transferred to the next generation 
This concept is called pangenesis and this, these particles present in every somatic cell is called what is known as pangenes or you can say plastic tubes or genutes. But this concept of pangenesis is also disproved by Wiesman. Wiesman not only disproved the concept of inheritance of acquired characters of Lamarck, but also he disproved the concept of pangenesis of Darwin. So pangenesis of Darwin, inheritance of acquired characters, both were disproved by August Wiesman. So one of the contributors of neo-Darwinism. So this is a modified form of what is called Darwinian concept based on some genetic principles, based on new discoveries they made, they modified what we call the Darwinian principle with some genetical basis.